Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite dummy, Gardner, the Linux gamer. This episode is brought to you by my gracious Patreon contributors. My Singularity Club members, the highest tier that there is on Patreon, get special recognition at the beginning of each video, so I just wanted to say thank you to Glenn Steen. Thanks Glenn, I'm truly humbled by your support. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful April day. We have uh, some interesting gaming news uh, going on right now. Uh, if you haven't heard about this, Valve have teased their new uh, headset. It's called Valve Index. And uh, they have a teaser page up on the Steam store where you can see uh, a glory shot of the uh, of the headset itself. Uh, not much to go on, honestly. Uh, there's a there's a picture of the underside of the device, uh, as well as a side on view of the front of the device. It's interesting. It's interesting. There are there's like stereoscopic cameras on the front that let you see, you know, one for each eye, so you get the pass through, so you can like you know, not run into things when you're wearing the headset and playing a game. There's also an IPD slider on the underside. If you don't know what IPD is, it's the interpupil distance. So the distance between the two pupils in your eyes. Um, that's important because if you don't have that, you can end up with blurry vision, you know, misfocused, misaligned lenses, um, which can result in, in, you know, some eye strain or even uh, maybe nausea, you know. What's interesting about the IPD slider is that uh, the Oculus Rift S doesn't actually have a physical slider. It's all done in software. I I'm glad that Valve stuck with the hardware solution here because, you know, you don't, you just don't, there's some complexity you just don't need to add. You know, if you have a mechanical slider, it makes sense. Just leave it. You know, you don't need to fr frick around with, um, with an electronic one. Just, just mechanical works. So just do it. And then there's a button on the underside, which there isn't a whole lot of information about that button. Um, that's basically all there is on the page. It says, upgrade your experience, May 2019. Cool. I'm excited. What about you? <laughs> so I actually haven't played a VR game yet. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to, and I think that this, is, this might be where I jump in to the whole VR experience. Um, so yeah, anyway, that page went live on Saturday, and uh, that was uh, March 30th. And uh, on April 1st, uh, and this wasn't an April Fool's joke, there was uh, an accidental leak of the actual store page for the headset, the controller page, uh, the, the store page for the controllers, and the store page for the base station. Um, not a whole lot more information on there. It was very incomplete. Uh, it had the wrong date listed on when it's launching. It had a list of bundles that might be uh, going along with the headset, which include the, the controllers and the base station, um, but no word on how many base stations are actually going to be included with the bundles. What's really interesting is that there were system requirements listed. Uh, these probably aren't final. I'm not going to say that they are, um, but if you, look at the, uh, if you look at the system requirements, it requires an NVIDIA GTX 970 or an AMD RX 480. Uh, as well as requiring a DisplayPort version 1.2 and a US, at, at least a USB 2.0 port. A recommended graphics card would be a, something more along the lines of the uh, NVIDIA GTX 1070. Uh, and if you want to use the actual stereoscopic cameras on the front, you're going to actually need a USB 3.0 port because 2.0 is just too slow. Remember that kids, 2.0 is just too slow. But what's interesting here is those are the Windows specifications. And if you, there's actually a, a SteamOS and Linux tab and you can click on that and all it says is requires SteamOS or Linux. But the fact that it's there and it's a placeholder gives me hope that we're actually going to be seeing the, um, this device, the Valve Index, on Linux, right? The HTC Vive actually doesn't have official Linux support. There, are, I think there are drivers, but I don't think it's officially uh, supported on Linux. But yeah, the fact of the matter is the HTC Vive doesn't have Linux support and uh, the Valve Index might. You know, I've been quoted as saying that uh, I think Valve might be working on a wearable VR computer, like some kind of uh, PC in a backpack that you could wa walk around in in some kind of arena where the base stations are wirelessly connected to it and you can like be in this wide open space playing VR. How cool would that be if you could like go to a, a VR arena 
and play a game in a wide open field. It'd be like as close to the holodeck as we can get with modern technology. And I honestly, I think that Valve might be working on something like that because boy, howdy, that would just be the coolest thing. And Valve have to know that like the biggest limitation with VR right now is the fact that you have like a very limited amount of space you can walk around in. So I don't know. That's that's my speculation. So Road to VR actually was able to get a quote from Valve who said that they plan on shipping this device in mid or late June. And um, they plan on taking pre-orders and announcing more information about the device on May 1st. That's pretty soon. I mean, that's like a month away, not like hard. That's about a month away from the time of this video. So the idea that we're going to get more information about this device uh, mid to, you know, in like a month's time, that's pretty exciting. <laughs> Another leak from around the same time shows that the uh, the the resolution of this device's screen is gonna be 1440 by 1600, which is a little bit wider field of view than the uh, current headsets. But I think all this leads us to a couple questions, like the elephants in the room, right? What is this thing gonna cost? Is this gonna cost $800, $900, or is this going to cost more like $1,500 to get the full setup? Right now, it's up in the air. We don't have any answers to that question. Will Valve be releasing a first-party title to go along with the release of this hardware? If they don't, is it dead in the water? Because honestly, if like Nintendo released a new console and no games came out with it, there would be no reason to buy the thing until a game came out. And even then, you have so much momentum when you first release the device. And if you don't capitalize on that with software that synergizes with your device, then you're not gonna be making up ground. It, you're gonna be losing a lot of momentum right out of the gate. And I think the final question is, what will the final uh, system requirements for this device be on Linux because I really think that they're they're going to be releasing this device for Linux. Let's look at the evidence. Valve have been putting all the pieces together for years, right? They continue to develop SteamOS even after so many uh, outlets and pundits and 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 dweebs have proclaimed SteamOS dead, right? So many people are saying SteamOS is trash garbage and blah 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 look they keep developing this operating system it's not just to support like the handful of people that bought the steam machines right this is be this they're doing this for a reason they're also developing software tools like proton that let windows vr games actually communicate with native uh, steam vr libraries on linux machines so that you can actually use your headset on Linux playing a Windows VR game. Just the fact that you can play your Windows games on Linux and now, you know, they're even having uh, the Steam VR bridge like they were talking about in, in the uh, Proton uh, GitHub page. That kind of stuff makes me think that they're bringing this device to Linux. Most of the games that Valve have released have come out for Linux um, and I can't see that momentum stopping. Even Artifact had a Linux build, right? So the idea that they'd create a game like Half-Life VR and not have it be released on Linux, it doesn't make sense to me. So what does all this mean? I mean, I don't know. I really think that Valve still see the future of gaming on the PC as Linux. Linux is the future of gaming. Microsoft and Windows are still super hostile towards Linux, even when they say that they love it. And they're hostile towards Valve's business model as well. So the concept of Valve just sitting by complacent while there's a real actual threat to their business model doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Except that we've kind of seen that from Valve, but they're being proactive with SteamOS, with Linux and Proton tools and all this stuff. So the idea that they would release this hardware without Linux support just doesn't make sense to me. I think that they are, and I think that uh, the future of gaming is still Linux. But I wanna know what you think. Do you think that this is gonna cost a pretty penny or do you think that Valve is gonna come in way under budget on this thing? Uh, or do you think that Valve will release Half-Life VR or another first party VR title along with the launch of this hardware. Let me know down below because I'm really interested to know what you guys think. But yeah, if you believe in the work that I do, you can support the show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon, or you can pick up a t-shirt. There's a link down below. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, The Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.